I'm the girl. Yes. Mamie Van Doren rose to fame in the 1950s in films like Teacher's Pet, starring alongside Doris Day and Clark Gable, and All American with the late great Tony Curtis. Throughout the 60s, well into the 70s, she continued to act, though she did eventually slow down and left Hollywood to focus on her family. Keep watching to learn what Van Doren has been up to lately and how she's been enjoying her 90s so far. Facts First presents Mamie Van Doren is the last surviving bombshell. See her now. Van Doren's Early Success Van Doren was born on the 6th of February 1931 in Rowena, South Dakota. She's the daughter of Warner Olander and Lucille Bennett. While she was a teen, her family moved to Sioux City, Iowa, and later to Los Angeles in 1942. In 1946, she started working as an usher at the Pantages Theater in Hollywood. A little under a year later, she was offered a bit part in an early TV series. After that, she briefly sang with Ted Flo Rito's band while competing in a number of beauty contests. When she was 17, Mamie eloped with Jack Newman in Santa Barbara, California. But things took a sudden and unexpected turn for the young lovebirds shortly after tying the knot when Newman's abusive nature reared its ugly head. Within months, their marriage was dissolved. In 1948, at age 18, Van Doren won the titles of Miss Palm Springs and Miss Eight Ball. She then got engaged to a heavyweight boxing champion named Jack Dempsey. Ever hear of him? Well, once again, things quickly soured in their relationship, and Van Doren ended up breaking off the engagement shortly after signing a lucrative picture deal with Universal. Wingnut producer Howard Hughes was the one who discovered Van Doren after she was crowned Miss Palm Springs that summer. Van Doren and the eccentric filmmaker and aviator even ended up dating for a few years, but then again, who didn't he date? During that time, he helped launch her acting career and placed her in several RKO pictures. In 1950, Hughes gave Van Doren a bit part in his film Jet Pilot. After making her film debut, she posed for renowned pinup artist Alberto Vargas. Van Doren continued to enjoy bit parts in several RKO features, including His Kind of Woman in 1951. She then started doing some stage work as a showgirl in New York City at Monty Proser's Billion Dollar Baby Nightclub. That's when songwriter Jimmy McHugh discovered her and started casting her in his musicals. While appearing in Comeback Little Sheba, Van Doren was seen by the casting director of Universal International, Phil Benjamin. This development led to her signing a contract with Universal in 1953. The studio had high hopes for their newest addition. They intended for her to bring the same level of success that Marilyn Monroe had brought to 20th Century Fox. Universal first cast Van Doren in a small role in the film Forbidden, which starred Tony Curtis. Then they cast her in 1953's The All-American, which also starred Curtis. In that film, she enjoyed her first major role playing a wayward girl named Susie Ward. She followed that feature up with a role as a slave girl in Yankee Pasha, sharing the screen with Rhonda Fleming and Jeff Chandler. From there, she enjoyed roles in films such as Ain't Misbehavin' and Star in the Dust, the latter of which saw her starring opposite a young and unknown Clint Eastwood. By this time, Van Doren had grown quite tired of Universal and wanted to move on to bigger and better roles with the studio. She was the perfect bad girl. Van Doren went on to star in several film noir flicks that later became cult classics. She also was featured in a few of the first rock and roll feature films. This combination of her bad girl roles and her presence in movies all about the devil's music led her to develop a reputation for being rebellious. Around this time, she even made a few rock records to help cement the reputation. In the following decade, Van Dorn appeared in some of her most noteworthy films, including Teacher's Pet, Born Reckless, and The Beat Generation. She also appeared in provocative roles in flicks like Girl's Town, which portrayed her as a prison inmate. The movie ended up drawing the ire of the censors due to a scene in which she was seen naked from the back in the shower. In The Private Lives of Adam and Eve in 1960, Van Dorn raised eyebrows when she wore just fig leaves, but it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what films like Sex Kittens Go to College and Vice Raid were all about. The majority of her films showed off her voluptuous curves, and her wardrobe typically consisted of low-cut blouses, tight sweaters, form-fitting dresses, and skimpy bathing suits. After Universal declined to renew her contract in 1959, Van Doren became a free agent and struggled to find decent film roles. Many of her later films were foreign language and indie productions, which did very little to keep her in the Hollywood spotlight. 
Many of these later productions were exploitative B-movies, which have since gained large cult followings. In 1961, she starred in the Argentinian film The Blonde of Buenos Aires, which hit limited theaters. She followed that up with 1964's The Candidate and Freddy in the Wild West. In the next decade, she appeared in films like Voyage to the Planet of Prehistoric Women, The Arizona Kid, and That Girl from Boston. Since then, she's appeared in only a handful of cameos in low-budget films. Her last film performance was the direct-to-video 2013 drama The American Tetralogy. She decided to focus on family life. Van Doren has been married five times and had a son named Perry Ray Anthony with her second husband, band leader Ray Anthony, in 1957. A couple years ago, Van Doren admitted to Closer that, quote, the days of the blondes started coming to an end after the deaths of Marilyn Monroe and Jane Mansfield, since she was the only one of the three M's who was left and she didn't want to raise her son in a seedy, drug-invested environment like downtown Hollywood, she ultimately made the decision to put her acting career on the back burner to instead focus on raising her kid. Van Doren has been married to her fifth husband, Thomas Dixon, since 1979. They live in Newport Beach, California, where they love soaking in the fresh ocean air. When Perry was young, Van Doren used to take him down to go see the boats. It was actually on one of these wholesome outings that she met Dixon. Sparks flew, and they've been happily married ever since. She wrote a memoir. Van Doren's first memoir, which was titled Playing the Field, hit shelves in 1987. In that work, she details her time in Hollywood, including dating many of Tinseltown's most eligible bachelors, like Frank Sinatra and Johnny Carson. Recently, she announced she had completed work on her second book, the follow-up to her memoir China and Me, Wind Flapping, Feather Pulling, and Love on the Wing, which is about her pet parrot China and published in September of 2022. In 2020, she told Fox News that a lot has happened in her life since 1987. This time around, she wanted to write about what it's like growing older and appreciating life as it comes. She also wanted to discuss how you end up getting smarter the older you become. Van Doren also writes about politics and current events on her blog. She and her husband maintain her website where various short films starring herself and merchandise are available. She firmly believes age is just a number. In an interview she did with Bust in 2021, Van Doren discussed what it was like being in her 90s. In that candid interview, she gave the readers a bit of wise advice by stating her belief that one's age all depends on their attitude. After saying we should all try our best to forget how old we are, Van Doren stated that, quote, life doesn't even start until 40. Mamie Van Doren's acting career may never have taken her to the same heights as Marilyn Monroe, but seeing as she's the last surviving blonde bombshell of Hollywood's golden age, she's got good reason to celebrate. She's happily married to the love of her life and also has a pet parakeet china to keep her company. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite Mamie Van Doren film? How do you think she stacks up against the other blonde bombshells of her day? Let us know in the comments section below.